The show's finally here, the TV show we've all been waiting so patiently for since it was announced, based on the beloved book series that pretty much everyone who's read likes, because it's just wonderful. I've loved it since I was 14 years old and I first discovered it. There were already like four books out when I discovered it. Here to redeem the travesty that was the movies, both of which I've reviewed, if you want me to break down what's wrong with those. And then, of course, as casting announcements came out, there became a whole ton of controversy to the point that Rick Riordan turned off the comments on all of his videos and a bunch of crazy people went and harassed child actresses. <laughs> don't, please don't do that. I understand why people were mad, but do not harass children. Don't do that. <laughs> it's not the way to show that you're, like, in the right. <laughs> And now the show's officially out, and I'm seeing all over my comments sections, like, people uh, going like, hey, watch the show, review the show, I gotta hear what you think about the show, because you guys have seen my reviews, and you've seen my trailer reactions, and you really want to hear what I think. I appreciate that, by the way. Thanks for the million subscribers. Um, and it sounds like a lot of you guys are loving it. I'm seeing a ton of comments of people going, dude, I love the show, it's fantastic, I absolutely love the characters, I love how everything is. Great to hear! You're probably going to be mad at me then, because <laughs> here I come with the hot take. Okay, it's it's not that hot a take. I don't hate the show. Like, first of all, only two episodes are out, so there's a lot I can't even judge yet. But I'm not loving it <laughs> right now. I'm really not. I think the camera's a little crooked. Sorry, here, let me fix that. Is that better? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just not loving it. I think it's fine. That's how I feel about it right now. It's fine. Um, there's some things about it that uh, I think are going really well. And there's other things about it that I'm honestly really not enjoying. But I'll, I'll get into all of it. Just hear me out. Let's start with what I do like, though. Let's start this on a positive note. So far, I'm really liking the look of it. Effects seem okay um, for the most part, though... You know, I'd probably have to watch it again to be really sure. I like how um, their outfits look at the camp. I, some people might look at that and think, that looks a little, like, cheap and stuff. But you gotta remember, it's not just Greek mythology outfits. It's also, like, a summer camp. And I think it looks like a really good, like, middle ground between, you know, what an actual Greek warrior would wear and what some kid at a camp would be wearing. So I think it looks nice. We've also got some nice statues at the camp and in the cabins. I like that. Cabins look good. I love the end credits, how those look. I love the design. As my friend Shane, had, Shane pointed out, it looks like a mixture of, like, New York art and Greek mythology art. Fantastic. Wonderful idea. Really liked that. Amazingly, there seems to be no uh, intro on this show. You know, uh, but, uh, okay, it's fine. Um, and, uh, yeah, I do like that it follows the books a little more. There's some funny moments I was able to enjoy, um, you know, and, uh, it, it works here and there, but, um, there's some things, some changes I'm really not happy about. Oh, Annabeth having her hat, love that. Um, Percy going through the camp, like, trying to figure out who's his godly parents, sucking at archery, sucking at metalwork, that was all fun to see. Um, Percy showing up, up at the camp, thinking he's gonna be bullied because that's what he's so useful, but then being surprised to see that he's accepted, for the most part, there's still Clary's, was nice to see. Like, I, I like that. Little scenes like that are things I can really enjoy, and I, I believe it because, you know, he's used to getting bullied his whole life, and suddenly he fits in better than he ever has before. But there's some stuff that I don't think was executed really well. For one thing, this show feels like it's rushing so much a lot of the time. They're not, like, letting a moment breathe. I know, look, you're, an adap you're adapting a, like, almost 400-page book into a TV show. But, again, it's a TV show. You, you'd expect more breathing room than, like, a movie. And sometimes stuff just feels like it's zipping right by, in my opinion. To the point where... Like, they never really let Percy discover stuff on his own. Look, I'm going to talk in this video as if you, you've you already seen the show or you just don't care about spoilers. Um, there's two episodes out right now, so that's all we're really going to be discussing. <clears throat> like, for example, when Percy encounters Mr. D, 
in the books, it's actually nice. It's got some breathing room. Like when he encounters Mr. D, he figures out based on the way he's talking and uh, what he's wearing and referencing, like drinking and stuff, he figures out on his own that that's Dionysus. And I love that. And what's nice is the way it's written is a way that the reader can discover it with Percy. It's very well done. In the show, however, Percy walks into the room and Grover immediately bolts in and goes, Percy, that's Dionysus. And I was like, oh, why would you do that? Come on. I don't like that. That's You ruined it. Also, the reveal of the Minotaur. In the books, the Minotaur is chasing from a distance and Percy is slowly re realizing what it is. Like he says, I see a silhouette of a very large man who for some reason is holding his hands over his head. I don't know why. And then as time goes on, it's like, I suddenly realize those aren't hands, those are horns. And that's when you're like, oh my God, that's the Minotaur. Like it's a good slow buildup and realization that again, you as the reader can discover with Percy. But in the show, the Minotaur drops in from a distance and immediately somebody goes, that's the Minotaur. Again, no discovery, no room to breathe. It's just, it's like, it's, I swear to God, it really feels like the director's looking at his watch like, come on, come on, say it, say what that is. We gotta get to the next scene. It's, it feels way too rushed. Like, the scene where Miss Dodds attacks Percy, in the books, she kind of figures out what he is, and then she, like, lures him away on his own to a private place where obviously no one's gonna see her take her true form and attack him. Whereas in the show, she just suddenly, right the hell out of nowhere, attacks him right in the open, right in front of everyone, and he just immediately stabs her and she disintegrates. I was like, well, that just, that just sort of happened. That just... Like, I don't, what, what was the buildup? What was, it, it, just so out of nowhere. <laughs> so, again, it just feels so darn rushed. Why did Mr. Brunner give Percy the, the pen sword in this? Like, he just hands it to him for no reason. In the book, he tosses it to him when he sees Miss Dodds attacking him. Makes perfect sense. And then gives it to him again much later when he realized Percy's gonna need it. But in this, he just gives it to Percy in the middle of the museum. It's like, you're just gonna give the kid a sword... You, you realize all the things that could go wrong with that. So I, I hope you understand what I mean by this rushed pace and just stuff kind of happening instead of being built up well. And I know, I know you're going to make little changes when you do an adaptation. You might have to cut some stuff down here and there. But I don't know, it just, it felt... It didn't feel super well executed to me as someone who loves the book so much. I even had to go back to the book a couple of times to be like, am I remembering this wrong? I was like, no, I'm remembering this right. <laughs> like, so, you know, it, you get what I'm saying, right? You get it. And um, here's what probably... Oh, wait, there's one more thing I want to say about the rushed pace. Another problem with the rushed pace is I don't think we got mo enough time for Percy to really feel like he's bonding with his campmates. In the book, I felt the friendship he was building with Luke. I didn't feel it as much in the show. I Like, they had so much less time to talk or anything like that. And then it's all the more strange because later he's, like, talking... He's trying to talk to, like, his mom or something... And he's saying, I really feel like I'm making real friends here. And I was like, are you? I'm not feeling it. And it's really annoying that he would even say that because then later when he finds out they're all in danger, he doesn't give a crap about them or want to help them. Another thing that's not in the book. So yeah, that's just how I feel about this. Oh my god! You know, I'll, I'll get to one more thing later. There's some other stuff I need to talk about first. So one thing that just makes this a little difficult for me again because I'm a big fan of the book it's a little tricky that almost no one looks how I picture them Percy Mo is almost there the blonde hair as you know from my trailer reactions throws me off Annabeth doesn't look how I pictured her but we see so little of her in these two episodes you know maybe we'll see more later and she'll really capture that spirit I hope so I want the show to be good I want the show to be good I want the performances to be good I want to be able to look at this and say, yeah, that's what people should watch. Um, Luke looks not how I picture Luke also. <laughs> like when I saw him, I was like, oh, that's Luke, huh? Okay. <laughs> and Gabe, like Gabe in the books is a piece of crap, like a abusive asshole, like who just smells like a sewer drain. And in the show, he just looks like some everyday loser. Like I didn't like... 
a spoiler alert for the end of this book, but um, it's revealed at the very end that Gabe has been beating Percy's mom. And with the way he looks in this show, I just can't see it. The dude looks like a freaking twig. He, I, I believe fully that Percy's mom could beat the crap out of this guy. So I, my guess is they're not even going to have that thing, that reveal. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> And yeah, so it, it it it's a little off-putting that no one looks how I pictured them. I still don't fully see this as the book coming to life. And one of the main reasons for that is also, I don't like the changes they're making to Percy's character. My favorite character in the Percy Jackson series is Percy Jackson. People are always asking me, who's your favorite character? Because a lot of people, their favorite character is Annabeth, or their favorite character is Leo in Heroes of Olympus. He is my second favorite. But my favorite has always been Percy, because I've always connected with Percy. Percy has a dyslexia and ADD. I also had ADD growing up. Percy has an easier time learning Greek mythology than he does other stuff. I also grew up being a very bad student at school, but excelling in Greek mythology, which you can probably guess I've now turned it into my career, and I'm very happy about that. Percy grew up in an abusive household, so did I. Um, you know, Percy, like, just, I connected with this character so much, and I really loved his positivity and how good of a person he was and how much he cared about his friends. It's even said in a later book by Athena, that's your weakness, Percy. You care too much about your friends. You care too much about other people. You're willing to do anything to help the people close to you. He's not like that in the show. He is not. I'm not liking what they're doing with him in the show. He and Grover's friendship is not good in the show. There's a scene in the show that's not in the book where for no reason at all, Grover just betrays Percy and gets him kicked out of the school for no goddamn reason. They try to give it a reason later. He's like, I had to get you kicked out of the school. It was the only way to save you. What are you talking about? No, you didn't. You could have just told him the truth. Granted, it's a little problem in the book, too, that they don't just tell him the damn truth. That is an issue. But they don't have this stupid Grover going and lying to the principal about Percy to get him kicked out of the school. And it creates this stupid artificial rift in their friendship that I hate. And in the book, in the book, when Grover is trying trying to get Percy to the camp, like, you know, Percy, even though he's doing it a really bad job of it, Percy still cares about Grover, and he helps Grover. And when Percy wakes up in the camp after his mom disappears, like, Grover realizes he's failed Percy and he's crying. And even though Percy, I went back and checked just to make sure I'm not remembering this wrong, even though Percy is so hurt that he's lost his mom, Percy starts comforting Grover, saying it wasn't your fault. And they talk, and their their friendship stays strong. In the show, Percy wakes up and immediately just ditches Grover, just goes, your job's done, I don't want to see you anymore, peace out, and gets out of there. I, I didn't like that at all. And later in the damn show, oh god, later in the show, um, so when it's revealed, this is just so weirdly executed. The second, again, spoilers alert, the second it's revealed that Poseidon is Percy's father in the show, they immediately, immediately, like, they just do two sentences saying, your father is Poseidon, that means you're going to be in cabin three, and then immediately, hey, by the way, Percy, just wanted to tell you that Zeus and Poseidon are currently at odds because the Master Bolt has been stolen. By who? By you? By me? Yes, you couldn't be. Then who? Who? The, ba the Master Bolt has been stolen by uh, you. We think Hades stole it, blah, 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 blah. It's just, they're rattling off all these plot points. They didn't let any of this breathe. We, it's like you just found out which god your father is. We should have a moment for you to take that in, for you to absorb it. But instead, they immediately jump to all this stuff. And then Percy finds out in the show, they say, listen, Percy, the entire Earth is at stake. Everyone here will die if you don't take on this quest. And Percy basically goes, screw you, I don't care about the world, I don't care about anyone, I will not take on this quest. He's being such an asshole and I hate it. I hate it so much. <laughs> wow, I'm okay, I'm being real, I don't hate the show, I just hate that, okay? I hate that. I hate those stereotypes. 
One of the things I loved about Percy in the book was you could tell he didn't really want to take on the quest because, you know, again, I went back and checked. Yeah, he's saying, oh, God, I got to get the stupid bolt. But you can tell he's still going to do it because he still wants to help people and he still wants to do the right thing. He cares about his friends. He wants to help his friends. He wants to help everybody. Again, I don't, but not, he's not like that in the show. He doesn't agree to help at all until Grover reveals to him that his mother is alive. And uh, uh, that's another stupid thing. In the, in the show, everyone but Percy finds out that his mother is alive and they tell Grover, don't tell him. You can't tell him his mother's alive. Why not? And then when Grover's telling him during that argument they're having, they're like, Grover, don't tell him. Why not? That's what will convince him to go on the damn quest. You freaking morons. Don't make Chiron and Dionysus morons. I don't like it. <laughs> like, Chiron is such a lovable character in the books, and he's not bad in the show. I just don't get why he's... It's just this one dumb decision he's making. So far, the guy playing Chiron is doing a decent job. It's just the way that this decision was written is so mind-numbingly stupid <laughs> and yeah it's it's like why even keep that from percy that wasn't in the book in the book percy went on the quest to help humanity but he also went he had a small hidden agenda that he was going to try to get his mom back from hades because he thought his mom was dead but hades he figures can give him his mother back and then he found out like halfway through the journey i think Ares told him your mom's not actually dead she was taken and so then when they get there hades is like yeah i took your mom uh, but um, in the show, it's just revealed immediately, and it and they create oh, there's all these stupid cliches I can't stand. Don't tell the main character obvious helpful information for literally no reason. Don't tell him his mom's alive, then he'll want to save his mom. By the way, we need him to go exactly to where his mom is on a quest and save the whole world. How do we convince him to do that? Hm, Grover, don't tell him his mom's down there. Why would you write it like that? So, I, I hope you guys understand why I have problems with this. But again, I like the look of the show. I do like some of the details. I just, I really had to rant about those particular problems because I think those are pretty serious problems. And Percy's my favorite character. I want him done well. He's the character I resonate with the most in this whole franchise. You don't know how happy I was when I finished the first Heroes of Olympus book. And I found out the next book was going to be Son of Neptune about Percy. I was like, yeah, he's back. I was so happy. Like, so it, it sucks to me to see him not done well. Like, I don't like how they're doing him right now. <sighs> but yeah, there is other stuff about the show I like. I just don't like, I don't think, I think Percy's relationship with his friends is integral to the plot of the Percy Jackson series. And so far, they're not doing it well. And uh, I'm just saying it better get better. Because one thing everyone has told me about, everyone has told me when I was like, oh, I'm not too sure about the casting decisions. Every single one of you guys has been telling me the reason these three people were cast is because they have a perfect dynamic together. Is because they have perfect chemistry together. Rick Riordan himself has said their dynamic and their chemistry is so perfect together. I'm like, okay, I'm waiting to see it. We're not seeing it yet, but we've got more episodes. I'm really hoping it'll get better. And I'm really hoping the... That, you know, we stop having that cliche crap. Like, I, I, I don't like that stuff. But I'm open to seeing it get better. I really, really hope it does. <sighs> um, do I have anything else to say about it? I, I think I kind of covered everything. But yeah, I, I hope you guys can understand my, my take here about that. But as you can tell, I'm a huge fan of the franchise, really want it to be good. I want it to go out on a high note because I love the idea of, you know, it keeping going for several seasons, us getting a Kane Chronicles show and a Heroes of Olympus show, maybe, maybe make some shows about the Rick Riordan Presents stuff. It's just, uh, we're not off to the kind of start I was hoping we would get. And I, I think I have a right to be worried. This has been a really bad year for Disney. <laughs> Like, a lot of bad stuff's been going on in Disney and Disney Plus in general. But uh, hopefully this can be the show that picks things up a little bit. Really hoping. Please, please get better. Please get better. I want it. I want you to be better. I want you to be one of the best shows out there. So far, you're okay. For these first two episodes, I'm between a five and a six. Five is average. Six is above average. I'm somewhere there in the middle. 5.5, I don't know. Shane agreed with me on this. 
If you want to see our full raw reactions to each episode, each of those is going to go up on Patreon. I'm going to up try to upload the first one today if I can, and, you know, it'll keep going like that. And I'll keep letting you guys know what I think episode by episode, but, hey, feel free to weigh in yourselves. Like, do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Are you a book reader? What are your thoughts? Are you not a book reader? What are your thoughts? Because I am curious to hear what the book readers and non-book readers might think. Like, I, I'm not entirely sure if this show is more for the book fans or more for the new generation. Maybe they're trying to do both. But as a big book fan, those are my thoughts on it. And uh, you can feel free to let me know your thoughts. Um, I don't know how to end videos.